Now, if you're wondering why all of this rain came across the hill country, Chief Meteorologist Anthony Yanez has the explanation here. I'm KPRC2 Chief Meteorologist Anthony Yanez. The area is known as Flash Flood Alley. The Guadalupe River, where extreme rainfall rates coupled with vulnerable terrain creates incredibly dangerous and deadly situations. And on top of that, it was a holiday weekend. Now, the morning before the event, there was a slight chance to get flooding in that area. But as this tropical moisture started to come together at 3.30 in the afternoon, a flood watch was issued. At 1.14 in the morning and again reissued at 3.19 in the morning, flood warnings were issued for a life-threatening situation. And at 4.03 in the morning, a flash flood emergency was issued. These are incredibly rare and they are for a catastrophic loss of life. When you look at the wide shot on the radar going back to Thursday night to Friday morning, there really isn't anything too impressive with this event. However, up until you focus in on what's going on west of Kerrville. Starting at 1 o'clock in the morning through 4 o'clock, you get training thunderstorms, torrential rain that fall down in one spot in the worst possible place on this part of the river. And you got rainfall rates anywhere from 8, 9, 10 to 11 and a half inches. And all that water had to flow down the Guadalupe River. And you look at the wide shot, it fell in the absolute worst place imaginable. It could have fallen in any other of these spots and you weren't, we wouldn't be talking about this kind of devastation and this kind of heartbreak. So that's what's focused there. In fact, as everybody went to bed that night uh, at midnight, the water was uh, seven feet high, moving at eight cubic feet per second. In three hours time, it was now at 29 and a half feet, moving at 120,000 cubic feet per second. In fact, this is the time when the river gauge broke, so it was higher than that later. So the forecast, there is a limit to predictability. These are the hard facts when forecasting extreme events. On um, something like this, you have a low chance that this can occur but the threat is incredibly high. So the question for the National Weather Service, broadcast meteorologists and emergency managers is how do you message the worst case scenario when it is such a low chance, but you have the high threat with everybody that was in that area at that time. Don't forget, you can always stay with KPRC2 News for updates on KPRC2 as well as our streaming channels.